bird's nest. Everybody, welcome back to the Flannel Channel, and I just wanted to jump right into the action here. This is a time-lapse shot of my son and I working on our father-son project. We call it Curtis Lowe. It's our 1979 Ford F-150, and we're body swapping it onto a 2003 Ford Crown Victoria. So here you'll see that I'm doing the tune-up on this thing. We're doing spark plugs. Uh, fuel filter, air filter, just kind of a basic freshening up, getting this thing uh, road ready because it's going to be my daily driver. And then uh, you'll notice that the car is already uh, finished with the suspension, so we got uh, new front struts and springs, new rear shocks on there. Uh, we also took care of our lower radiator support that was kind of bent up from a previous wreck. And uh, you'll see that Jacob is actually working on the steering wheel and the steering column in the time lapse here. and uh, what he's doing is he's actually cutting the center section hub out of the stock steering wheel from the 03 because we want to be able to use the 1979 steering wheel uh, in this modern chassis. And so we're kind of going to make our own steering wheel adapter if you want to think of it that way. Uh, so anyway, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're following along with uh, the progress of our pro project. And uh, we're having a blast working together in the shop. And hopefully it's something you want to Follow along with us. On the second part of today's episode, you're going to get to see the wheels uh, that we have mounted up. They're 18 inch uh, that we just got done refinishing and painting ourselves. Just a rattle can job, but they turned out pretty good. And uh, I think we're going to be happy with the final result. We'll end up having to do a little bit of tweaking to get them to, to mount up correctly. But uh, anyway, follow along. Should be a interesting and hopefully a little bit entertaining episode for you. All right, so I wanted to take a minute and show you guys exactly what Jacob's been working on with the steering wheel thing as I replace the spark plugs doing the tune-up back here. So this is the original Crown Vic steering wheel, and you probably already know that we want to use the original 1979 steering wheel from the pickup truck. Uh, and so these things are molded out of, I believe it's magnesium. It might be aluminum, but it's so light, I believe that's magnesium had a steel center and uh, the way that it's on the steering column on the Crown Victoria is actually two flats in there and the original 70s steering wheel is a bunch of small splines and it's smaller diameter shaft as well. So what Jacob did is he cut some of the magnesium with the cutoff wheel and we were able to split it apart and get the center steel section out of the original steering wheel. Our plan now is to weld those two together. Now that's going to set the steering wheel out and back a little bit further, but that's okay. That's actually going to help uh, with where the seats and everything are uh, in relation with this dash. And that will then in turn allow us to use the steering wheel. We're just going to get a longer bolt, which I think we already found one, right? We're going to get a longer bolt that holds that steering wheel in and uh, holds it secure course Loctite on there but uh, yeah so it was time consuming it really put up a fight but uh, Jacob prevailed and got that out of there for us and I think our steering wheel is going to work um, we're not going to worry about having the horn button there we'll probably do the horn some different way you know an external button somewhere um, the cruise controls buttons that were originally on the Crown Victoria steering wheel we took those out and we're going to try and come up with cruise control switches on our dash or some other way to do that uh, when the time comes. So, yeah. All right, so I just wanted to take a quick minute and explain to you why some of the footage in this video is a little bit more grainy. Maybe the audio sounds different uh, and things like that. It's because partway through this episode filming, I upgraded to the iPhone 14 Pro and uh, got some wireless mics. So 
My goal is to try and make better quality content that you guys actually enjoy seeing and trying to put everything in 4K as much as I possibly can. I had been filming on my GoPro with the corded uh, microphones. It seemed to be working pretty well. I'm still going to use the GoPro for some footage, you know, action shots and stuff like that. But that's why you're seeing what you're seeing. Second thing is I'm here in my shop that I work at 7.30 to 5 every single uh, Monday through Friday and uh, I'm back to being a full-time mechanic. I've been a mechanic since 2001, been a master tech since uh, 2003, um, but I climbed out of the truck cab. I'm back to turning wrenches full-time. I absolutely love it, and I'll give you guys a full shop tour. We'll tour the tool toolbox and things like that, but I don't always wear flannel 24-7. Um, I do wear the uniform, but uh, anyway, that's just a quick rundown of what you're seeing and why and some changes that are happening. So if you sometimes see clips that are a little bit more grainy or the audio is not quite as good, it's probably because it's an old clip or something that I had already saved in my edit software. And um, there's also full episodes that I still haven't released yet um, that I'm kind of hanging on to. So you're in that transition period, but eventually we'll get to where everything is gonna be recorded on the iPhone and uh, hopefully it's gonna be a better end result. But that's a quick behind the scenes, what's going on. Um, but let me take you over here and I'll show you why I'm here at the shop after hours and uh, we'll get into tonight's episode. Here we go. So here they are. The final coat has dried enough that we can actually mount these wheels up tonight. And uh, I'm pretty excited about it. I love doing tire work anyway, here at the shop after hours and uh, Tire work is one of my favorite parts of turning wrenches. Uh, I don't know, it just always has been. I'm just putting on a set of used Kumos. They're not awesome, but it's guilt-free burnout stuff to me. Uh, they were takeoffs from a customer vehicle they weren't gonna use anymore, a little bit of cupping and choppiness going on there, and I don't care about noise. They're free, they're the right size, and uh, let's put them on. It's gonna be awesome. Awesome, I'm really happy with that. I think that has just the right look that we were going for. And uh, it's gonna fit the style of Curtis just right, I think. So I'm gonna explain to you real quick on the tire machine, you'll probably notice some of you tire guys that are paying very close attention are astute. Uh, I clamped the wheel from the outside just because I didn't wanna put marks and scratch up the inside of the wheel that we also painted up. So that's why I clamped from the outside. And uh, I'm also gonna be doing kind of a static balance on this thing because this outside lip is gonna be exposed. So I'm gonna make sure that all my wheel weights stay on the back side of the wheel. And uh, so let's get them on the balancer and get that taken care of now. I'm really happy with how those balanced up and uh, yeah, it's perfect. Kept all the wheel weights on the inside, a little bit of stick on, a couple of them had the clip on on the outside, we're good to go. Let's take them to the other shop. Now those of you uh, that are in the know on this, you understand that we're going to be doing some pinstriping on the truck itself and I plan to do uh, a simple pinstripe on the outside of the wheel. The reason I'm not doing that right now is because this paint really is only about, I don't know, a week old. And I've had problems in the past with pinstriping over fresh enamel paint that didn't turn out well, uh, simply because the, uh, the freshly painted stuff freshly sprayed, whether it's rattle can or from a body shop, it needs time to off gas, it needs time to cure and harden. 
And uh, if I was to put that pinstripe on now, there's a chance that the, the striping enamel that I would paint with would have a reaction and um, possibly peel off really, really easily. So uh, the reason uh, that, or I should say a couple of the things that I've tried in the past to correct that would be using a hardener in my pinstriping paint, which does help, it does work, but if I can wait, I'm gonna wait. And so that's why this stuff is just gonna be patient and wait. And the uh, project is gonna take at least another month, so we've got some time to let that paint cure before we put some stripes on it. Yeah. All right, so we're back at the custom shop and get these unloaded. I think they're gonna look just right. I'm pretty excited to do a quick test fit on that truck. And uh, yeah. Now, you could use your help on something. Put in the comments down below, I don't know if it's see the comments uh, I hear about them if it's something important that I need to know about but tell us what you think we should call this shop here we uh, we tend to call it the Hanson shop or the custom shop or uh, sometimes we call it West Side Customs because it's kind of a play on our last name West uh, you know the YouTube studio there's lots of different things that we call it but it's where most of uh, our projects are starting to happen and will be happening in the future. So we could use your help. What should we name this shop? Put it down below. All right, let's, uh, let's bolt these up. Just kind of get, get things tucked up out of the way just a little bit, make some room. Obviously I'm gonna still be doing more work up in there, but tonight is about seeing if everything clears like we want it to. I so much prefer the look of this wheel over the 16s that were on the car. Not only do we gain an extra at least inch of width, uh, might even be more than that, inch and a half or two, but the back spacing is more pronounced. There's not a big wide lump bump that comes out and uh, obviously outside diameter. So it's going to corner better. I just plain don't like the look of this wheel. I like these better. So, yeah. Same bolt pattern. Yeah. All right. So, I can see right now, there's one modification we're gonna have to make. That's our inside diameter right here. It's fine. I'm not worried about it. I was actually kind of anticipating it. So, I'm gonna do just a little bit of creative surgery just to make a couple extra millimeters. It's not a lot, but we're going to open up that hole just a little bit more. Safety? Yeah, we got safety. So here we have a couple of options. A, I can modify the wheel. B, I can modify the hubs of the car itself. C, I could probably find a spacer that would um, put the wheel, it would, the spacer would fit over the hub of the car and then set my wheel out just a little bit further. We may do that. We may. But I think the first thing I'm going to try is actually just opening up that circumference on the inside of my wheel a little bit more. Not a lot, just a little bit. But yeah, that's what we're up against. That's what we're going to do. Bolt pattern's the same. Everything clears really, really nicely. And uh, I won't know as far as turning radius and things like that, how well this wheel fits until I get my modification of my center done. But first things first, that's what we're gonna do. So it's a good chance for us to take a minute and check out our list and cross a few things off so that we feel that sense of accomplishment like we're actually getting some stuff done on the project. And um, like you probably saw in previous episodes, we have one list that's specifically for the Crown Victoria and one list for the pickup body itself before we actually start marrying the two together. And um, so uh, let's just quick go down the list and we'll talk about what's been done, what we need to try and accomplish today while we're here in the shop. 
and what some of our goals are in order to get the body prepared to go on to the Crown Vic, so. All right, so um, we have the shifter tube bushings installed on the Crown Vic steering column. Um, I'm gonna work on those exhaust manifold uh, ticking noise, try and get that sealed up today. Tune-up is done, so spark plugs, fuel filter. Um, we did cut the bumpers off of the Crown Vic, so we'll cross that off. Uh, we got the oil change done on that 4.6 liter. Uh, we did get our wheels painted and the hubcaps are polished. One last thing that we're gonna be working on is uh, making sure that our wheels, uh, we're gonna modify either the, the hub or we're gonna modify the, the, the wheel center itself or something like that, maybe use some spacers, but we'll, we'll get down on that as time moves on. So that, even though the paint is done, the wheel fitment isn't quite right, but we'll come back to that. Um, exhaust system and cats, uh, we're not gonna mess with that just yet. Um, oh, the steering wheel. Uh, yep, we got that put on. Jacob did that last Saturday and the lower radiator support is done. So yeah, that's, we're making good progress there on the Crown Vic. Um, moving over to the pickup list. We got the dash, that's done. Um, cutting floor. Jacob's going to work on the wipers today. Um, he's taking the wiper motor from the Crown Vic and he's going to try and make that work on the 79. Swap that over. Uh, cab corners, we don't have the paint mixed up yet. Bed. Uh, oh, we cut off the uh, bumper mounts off the frame, so that's done. And we did add our cross brace to the cab. So, yeah. Good progress. Cool, so now that Jacob has the Crown Vic and the 79 wiper motor next to one another, we can see that he's gonna be able to hopefully use this old mounting plate for the Vic as a pattern for how to uh, drill holes and um, modify this plate to mount this motor. And then he's gonna switch over the, uh, the crank arm from this to that. And if we need to, you know, we'll weld something or we'll somehow modify it so that this arm and armature can fit onto this motor. This motor will then get bolted to that plate and then we can go back in the cab of the truck. Yeah. All right, so I took the original mounting plate for the wiper motor from the 79 and the Crown Vic and I welded them together. I drilled holes through it, kind of adapted how it all bolts together and then adapted for the original uh, armature mm -hmm. of the 79. So Awesome, nice job. I'm proud of this young man for taking a little project like that on and seeing it through from start to finish. Nice work. All right, you gonna bolt it up in the cab? Yep. So we're good news so far on my exhaust manifold job. Uh, so far, I only have one busted stud up in here where you can see that black suit was and uh, the rest of the studs have been unbolting quite easily and the, the studs themselves are just coming out of the block real nice. So um, I'm encouraged by that. If all I have to do is fix one or maybe two busted studs in the cylinder head, that's great news. So, so far, fingers crossed, let's keep at it. So the good news is all these other studs came out really nicely and it's only these back two that I'm going to have to try and weld the nut onto. I'm hoping that there's enough steel sticking out that I can build up a little bit with the welder and uh, get a nut on there and turn them out because those studs really are not in there that tight, but uh, you got to try something. I would much rather try and weld a nut on there and back it out with a wrench than have to drill it out because that soft aluminum is uh, just no fun to try and drill around. So we're gonna give the welder and, and a nut thing a try. Here's hoping. All right, here we go. Oh, I think it worked. Come on, baby.
Feels like it. <laughs> right, so we got the driver's side all finished up. New studs are in and uh, good to go there. I switched over to my driver's side, which I was kind of on the fence about. I didn't really hear any leaks over here, but boy, I'm glad I did it because uh, two of the studs broke while I was removing it. That's not a shock, but you can see they're protruded out from the cylinder head so I can have something to weld onto. But the reason I'm glad that I did this and get this to focus is this lower bolt right here is the one that broke off deeper but when you see a break in a bolt that's rusty on the end like that that tells you that's an old break and you can see from the soot that that's actually been leaking for a while so now's the best time for me to be able to fix the problem and uh, before we put any more body work on around this thing it's uh, it's the right time to fix it. So we'll weld some more nuts on, but not before we stop and have a taco break. So Taco John's not a sponsor yet, but that'd be great. All right, so we're hanging out downstairs in the basement, kind of at the workbench area. It's a school night, and sometimes we do little miniature projects like this throughout the week just to keep the project moving. And so we're working on the grill out of the 79 tonight, and you can tell it's got some cracks in it and it's more flexible in places that aren't supposed to flex so our plan is to use some zip ties and some two-part epoxy that I picked up at the store we're actually gonna flip this thing upside down our plan is to use the zip ties to kind of pull everything tight where it belongs close up those cracks and then we'll use the glue and we're just gonna kind of lay that glue on the back side of this grill, strengthen it up, and nobody will ever see that. After it's been dried, we'll cut those zip ties back off and then flip this thing over, give it a little scuff, and shoot it with some fresh paint and make the front of this truck stronger, hopefully make it look a little bit better on a budget. So let's give it a shot. All right, so our zip ties are on, and we're gonna kinda squirt in equal amounts as it comes out and then use a screwdriver to just kind of double check and make sure that it's where we want it. Just sort of like that. And I'm purposely letting it kind of dribble down the walls a little bit. And I'm paying close attention to where my zip ties are at because that tells me that's where the cracks are at. I think this worked. It seems to be thickening up and hardening already even just in the last few minutes. Um, we use maybe one and a half of these packages and uh, yeah, it has kind of a weird smell sort of like dog farts I don't know, but it's about the consistency of honey and it's slowly building up Thicker and thicker and we were able to just use old screwdrivers that we don't care that much about and we can just kind of smear it around and bring it up, you know, and 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 paint with it almost a little bit and sort of drag it around uh, if you've ever worked with fiberglass resin and hardener that's essentially what this stuff is i mean it's marked as resin and hardener and so that's kind of what we were going for and you know the other way that you could do this is actually mix it in the package or on a little tray and then you know squirt it in there but because it has that nice syringe and we can get it right down in there and then smear it around it's mixing quite well and it's obviously hardening up nice so we're gonna let this sit overnight and uh, come back tomorrow, we'll snip our zip ties and see if this worked and you'll find out with us. Well, gotta try something. So this thing has had about a week or so to kind of dry and harden and it's not perfect. I mean, ideally we probably would have squeezed all of that two-part epoxy out, stirred it up really, really thoroughly and then shot it in there. But for the most part, I'm pretty happy with it. And uh, I'm just gonna snip off the zip ties here and it's not, uh, it's not brand new, but it's way better than it was. And that's all we were going for. It's an original and uh, you only get one original. So yeah, I think it's gonna be just fine. We're gonna run it. Woo! So what you're looking at here 
is the dash out of the pickup. And I thought, you know what? Now is the perfect opportunity to shine this thing up just a little bit. It's got years and years of sun fade and dirt and grime and smoke and all kinds of stuff on it. So I just grabbed myself some cheap polish that was on sale at the parts store and nothing fancy. I just rubbed one little corner with a rag and I was impressed with what it started to turn out as. So I thought, yeah, perfect thing to do on a school night down in the basement. You know, it's not amazing, but it's better than it is over here. And that's really all we're going for is just better. Get a little shine out of it. So um, I have a drill with a little, you know, pad and a chunk of microfiber just for those really tight spots. And for the bigger areas, it's just a wool pad, the kind of thing that I would use on any of the cars. Nothing fancy. And we'll just go over it. it looks like somebody at one time sprayed some spray paint or clear in some of these spots. But yeah, I don't know. To me, it's just one of those fun things you can do since it's out of the truck and it's easier now than when it's bolted in. So why not? kind of a side-by-side -side comparison of what I'm actually accomplishing. So this area here has not been done. And obviously, you know, it's it's in some areas where some trim pieces are going to be covering it. But you can see where I stopped here and where I started. And uh, definitely getting some more shine out of it. I like it. Now's the chime. So today is going to be a day that we start tackling some of the sheet metal that we know we're going to have to deal with. And uh, so I'm going to work on my first rust repair that I've ever done in my life. Again, I'm not a body guy, but I'm going to just do my best and you can learn along with me probably what not to do. So body guys might want to fast forward this part, but you know, we're just going to do our best. I'm also going to start cutting the floor out of this thing. That's kind of why we tipped it that way and uh, Jacob is going to start cutting on the floor of the Crown Vic the section between the rear hump and uh, where the back of the cab is going to be uh, kind of making room for where the the box is going to go so time to throw some sparks and do our best yep yep there we go there's the bird's nest <laughs> <laughs> Sweet! So, you can start to visualize where the pickup's going to be and where the back of the cab is going to sit. I think this needs to move forward a little bit, but... All right, so I have my cab corners trimmed down. Obviously, they were much longer, and I'm gonna try and keep my patch panel as small as possible so that my body work, my, my welding, my seams, and all that stuff are out of sight as much as possible. And so I was able to just kind of use the air hammer and bust away at those spot welds that were there, grind it loose, uh, smooth, and then I'm just kind of doing my, my test fit of where I like everything and and we'll just go through and start tack welding to try and get everything to sit like I want. And uh, again, because I'm not a body guy, I'm probably just going to say, yep, looks pretty good, and just go for it. Um, funny thing, too, when you're dealing with Taiwan parts like this, I notice there's a difference in my, in my two pieces. You see that? 
one's a lot longer. So I'll end up trimming that little piece off the end of the, off the end of it too, so that everything sits like it should when it's all said and done. But you get cheap parts, that's what you get. But you know, hey, good enough for us. All right, so, hey, thanks for sticking around for the entire episode, start to finish. You get to see us do a little bit of surgery on both vehicles, getting ready to marry them together. You got to see uh, me kind of trying to learn how to do a little bit of body work and uh, probably a perfect example of what not to do, but I'm just learning as I go and we're having a blast, just making dust and making sparks fly and making stuff fit and work, so. We're very thankful, we're blessed to be able to be out here doing what we love to do. Thank you for following along and for supporting the channel. Um, hey, just remember, I don't see any of the comments here on YouTube, so if you wanna interact with me directly, you'll find me over at Instagram, it's at flannel underscore Philip. We have merch at goshineon.com. If you want hoodies and t-shirts, it's perfect hoodie weather right now. There's like a blizzard going on in Minnesota. <laughs> it's nuts. So that's going to do it for this episode. Jacob's going to head out and uh, I'm going to run home, grab a bite to eat. And I'm coming back this afternoon to keep wrenching and working and doing some more stuff on our project. But you'll see that in the next episode. So thanks so much, everybody. Peace and grease. <laughs>